Color theory. The Home Depot salesman says, remember you won't have to live with your choice, you'll have to live inside it. I imagine each gradation, unpacking frying pans and toothbrush, paperback strewn inside plum wine, arctic lilac, chiasmic violet. On the glossy card they've chained beside the racks of color, I learn that purple promotes drowsiness and nausea, not recommended for kitchens or the pilot house of boats. Yellow, well energizing, can make one irritable unable to blink naturally, too anxious to swallow. Which shade is it that makes one likely to remember turns from years ago samba classes, make perfect holidays, sing like Bernadette Peters? Which color will help me find my mother's citrine ring, borrowed and lost in seventh grade, or remember the name of the Australian band that sang a girl, or find the hotel where Klimt awoke in a light sweat after dreaming of a kiss? If I paint the living room first green and the office eggshell and mist, what primordial creatures will hatch from the doorway clouds? What storm fronts sweep my bookcases empty? Will my insurance refuse payment for accidents resulting from color? The supernova blue that caused me to fly kites from second floor windows? Or the Miami sunburst trimmed with japonica that enticed me to juggle butcher knives and palm granites? To make things simple, I'd like one color that will make me want to sing, cry, fuck, write letters to strangers, wear fishnet stockings, buy irises, walk barefoot, listen to Coltrane, move out, stay forever, have children, and understand winter. One can, well stirred. Woo! Cool, this next one is called Heart Lines. It starts off in a bar, so I thought I should read Heart lines. Listen to your heart, this new man tells me. We are in a bar with red velvet curtains for walls, sashes of conversation draped under music. He pours rum and then coke over ice, which rattles like elegant gravel. When I listen to my heart, I hear tires crunching on a dirt road years out of this city, crumb pulse of wood slats on the high water bridge. I swam after angelfish in that shallow creek, and though I'm sure now they were trout or less, I remember their fins flirtatious silver. Why is it that blood, which is most of our bodies, disappears when we strike it with light? If I could, I'd spend this night in my own heart, hear its off-metronome gurgle, flowing and falling of darkness. I'd string bright lure, open and fill the locks. In there, my father's fibrillated beat, my mother's paling blood. In the red-lit elevator, he jokes clever drunkenly of Dante, though next day, writing down nine floors in silence, I do not think of hell but of a heart, awkwardly standing in a single chamber as the cables lower us into our outside skins. I never see this man again, a classical pianist stockbroker who promised to seduce me with music. I remember these notes, like the 75 counties of a state I seldom visit, useless even when I learned them as a child, unforgettably. By heart. Woo! I always have to ask after that one, did anybody else grow up in a state where you had to memorize all the counties of your state? Yeah. In alphabetical order to like a sing-song rhythm? Yes? Okay, only my friend who might be lying, so I won't feel like a loser. In Arkansas, we had to memorize all 75 counties, and I still know a lot of them. So you can see me afterwards if you're interested in that. Or my book, which I happen to be carrying around. Okay, I have two more. Um, this is about the game Clue. How many of you played Clue? <laughs> Not the movie Clue, but the game. And I always had to be Miss Scarlet. I thought Miss Scarlet was really amazing, and so I always wanted to write about her. So this is called Clue. Always Miss Scarlet made to burn, satin train of her dress and the slender cigarette, a magic wand in its pearl holder, her name like talons, impervious, sleek as chaise longs at the Excelsior Hotel, where Diamond Bessie glittered toward death. Always the black waterfall of her hair, a single picture in a secret envelope. Always the first to go, but not for this. We could swish of her skirt, long red nails like the women typing features at my father's office, brazen clack and bells to signal each return, new questions to narrow truth until it fit on three cards, always the diagonal glide through walls, knowing before I understood the double wick of her candlestick, polish and gleam, victim and victimizer, knife and ballroom, unafraid, every death resolvable, 
gloved and gorgeous in the pageless library, the parlor, the conservatory, a memory palace where she could only remember by entering the past with her body, gathering the rope and wrench, gathering guilt before innocence. And I'll close with this one, which is about going to an art theater in Fort Worth, Texas when I was growing up. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Fort Worth Art House. I was awake for David Bowie's penis in The Man Who Fell to Earth, although I slept through most of what came after, as I'd slept through Gandhi, the screen obscured by chairs, the lights casting out over our faces like a camera obscura, like we were all my parents, strangers, Ben Kingsley, all the saffron Muslim throngs outside the theater looking in and inside looking out. His penis was not remarkable, as I remember, but it was also remarkable as the first penis I ever saw. His alien skinny body strolling through New York or some city I hadn't been to yet, too young to absorb all the details, also too young by more than a decade for X-rated movies, though my parents knew the owner and they all believed, rightly, I'd fall asleep, or wrongly, wouldn't see Tess fall from the wagon and roll down the hill with a man, which was apparently how she got pregnant in that other movie, Full of Beautiful Fields. My favorite movie for years was Gallipoli, but I don't remember much now except running at guns and the floor's cool concrete before sleep, lying in an innocence before the fears of germs and perversion, while empires overturned and shots were fired, and David Bowie, Newer to earth than me, walked the shimmering earth above my head where his penis was art. Thank you.